Hey folks, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at this Tucson knife. This is the TS-27, and I just realized this week as I was preparing for this video that they have a titanium handle version for uh, less than double the amount of money that this one costs, or right close to that anyways. Uh, we've got D2 steel blade here, nice sheep's foot, and this blade shape just knocks the socks off of me. I really, really like this top little swedge, uh, sort of like a hollow grind swedge up there. It is a beautiful knife. If you're looking for a little knife to get, uh, check out my Tucson review. Well, it's not a little knife, it's a full-size knife. It's definitely a full-size. Flipper and uh, G10 handle, or you can get the titanium and I'll tell you how. So stay tuned for the review of this guy coming at you right now. Uh, this knife, the first thing you need to know is that it comes in two colors, black or this uh, jade kind of color. The store that I got this from is a store on AliExpress. Uh, they've got Y Start in the name of their store. They've got lots of Y Start knives. They are out of the jade ones. They've only got black left. I think most people are going to want to buy black anyway, so that's a good thing. And uh, like I said in the intro, this knife also comes with titanium handle scales. So if they run out of these, yeah, I'd just spend a little bit more money and get the titanium one. Why not, right? <laughs> you can see the nice satin lines here on this blade. Let's see, there we go. Check that out. Beautiful, beautiful. Love that blade. And then check out that swedge up there. Isn't that nice? I love that swedge. It looks like it's a bead blasted swedge. And uh, see how it gets narrow up here. And then it goes down to the full thickness of the blade down there. Beautiful, beautiful knife. And as you can see right on here, once we focus, it says morning night design on the blade. D2 steel. Really nice sharpness choil in here. I like that an awful lot. And a nice strong tip on this blade. And uh, as you can see how it's made here. Really nice. And uh, there's the, uh, the G10 again. Pocket clip is a right side only pocket clip. It uh, sits fairly high out of the pocket. And I wish it was a deeper pocket clip. I wish they would have put this up a little bit higher. They could have used the exact same pocket clip and moved it, you know, at least a quarter of an inch up this way. And that would have been, uh, I think, significantly better. We've got a backspacer here of the same G10 as the handle scales. And you can see that there is skeletonizing in there. And uh, why don't we show you the insides of the knife right now? Here is the... Uh, the knife taken apart, you can see there's skeletonizing in the top liner. Uh, the middle liner doesn't have any skeletonizing, and the blade is beautiful. And you can see that there are the um, ceramic ball bearings on the uh, ball bearings. There's also a ceramic on the detent uh, right up on here. Free spinning pivot pin, but not a problem. It came apart very easily. And I love that all the screws were T8s, so it's just great. If they would have skeletonized this liner here, I'm sure the balance would be off. Right now, the balance is very good on this knife. So there you go. That's the inside of the knife. Okay, so what do you think of that? I think it's a really nice knife. We've got um, just enough skeletonizing so that uh, the balance point is right there. Beautiful. And uh, it's a very comfortable knife in hand. There's no hot spots. All of the edges here on the liners are lightly rounded, and that's a really good thing. Uh, we do have a free spinning pivot, but uh, right underneath this screw, there's a black washer. Let me show you a still picture of that. Actually, it's an O-ring, <laughs> as you saw in the picture, and that stops this from backing out you know, while you're using the knife. So that's a really good thing. I like that quite a lot. So what else did you want to see about this thing? Well, liner lock, lockup is solid. No blade plays side to side, up and down, really nice. The lockup point right here is perfect, exactly where I want a brand new knife to be. 
One of the viewers suggested that I put, you know, a tape measure in the corner when I'm giving the measurements for this blade. Uh, this is a big full size tape measure, <laughs> eight meters, 26 feet long. I think the next time I go to, you know, a dollar store or something, I'm going to buy a tiny little one, hopefully in a bright color that I can put in the corner when I'm doing the measurements. And that will make it really obvious when I'm doing the measurements and when the measurements are done. So when this leaves, I'm done. So what do we got here? 137 grams, 4.85 ounces. Beautiful weight for this knife. The blade length and the cutting edge length are the same. So the tip to the closest spot on the G10, 9.73 centimeters. That's 3.83 inches. So yes, this is a full-size knife over three and three-quarter inches. Big knife. The blade thickness is 3.85 millimeters. That's 0.1515 inches. The blade depth, that's this measurement right here at the top of this nice thread to the blade, 3.17 centimeters, one and a quarter inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.42 millimeters. That's 0 0.0165 inches. Nice and thin edge helps this thing be an awesome slicer. And it is. Uh, the grind angle, I think I found the very best grind angle knife that I've found since I started measuring the grind angles on knives. Remember, I like 20 degrees per side. This thing's 19.9 degrees on this side and 19.3 degrees on this side. Now, of course, it's not exactly the same angle all the way up. You know, people do move a little bit while they're grinding it, but that's where I measured one inch from the end of the handle. That's where I do my measurements. So that is simply awesome. Well, the handle, the handle length here is 12.17 centimeters. That's 4.79 inches. And the grip area between my thumbs is 10.2 centimeters, four inches on the nose. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.37 centimeters. That is 0.539, so just over half an inch thick at the thickest point. And it does have a bit of a radius to it. It's it's more narrow here and it comes up and then back down so it's higher in the middle. The handle depth is biggest right here 2.62 centimeters that's 1.03 inches and then when you close the knife it's basically the same spot here is 3.6 centimeters 1.42 inches and the total length of this knife from tip to tail 21.9 centimeters 8.62 inches. Now, if you want to buy this knife, you can buy this knife from uh, that store online at AliExpress. I've got a link down below in the description area. Uh, the G10 version is $37.90, and the titanium version is $59.84. That's U.S. dollars. So in Canadian, it's like $50 and $80. So that's the price and everything. Now, this is a knife that is beautiful. Now, you can see when I flip this knife, it doesn't just fly out with a big thwack. Uh, the detent is just a little bit softer than I'd like it to be. And that's why when I open it, you know, it opens up nicely. And I can use the light switch method, pulling straight back. Or I can push straight down because the top of that is behind the pivot center of the pivot point. So either way makes it open. I just wish it had a slightly stronger detent. Um, I've heard of some other people that they say they have this knife and theirs has a really, really good detent. So it might just be that this one's got a slightly softer detent than the average one. Uh, let's talk about the unique features, what I like and don't like on this knife. Well, like I said, the blade, I love this blade shape. This sheep's foot here is just a gentle belly all the way along the blade. This nice saber grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't come up to the full spine beautiful. And this swedge up here is simply awesome. It's got me intoxicated. I love that swedge. Nice jimping here to rest your thumb in right there. Get a really good solid hold on this knife when you're using your thumb right in that, in that uh, thumb riser. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I, I wish this knife came with thumb studs. And you know what? I'm actually thinking about drilling this out here and putting in a custom pair of thumb studs and then grinding down this flipper tab. Uh, simply because, you know, flipper knives, yeah, flipper knives are great, but it's hard to find good thumb stud knives. 
And I like thumb stud knives. I like flipper knives too. Sure. Just like almost anybody else. But, you know, I think there's something going on in the, the uh, last years of this decade where the whole knife community is so enamored with flippers that, you know, other styles of deployment just are getting uh, missed. So there you go. That's enough rant for that. <laughs> um, the screws here, uh, this body screw is a nice flush body screw. And this one's just slightly raised on both sides, the pivot screw. T8 on both of them. T8 for the thumb studs as well, and for the pocket clip, I should say. But I wish those were flat too, just to keep the, the theme going. Because that pocket clip in some ways seems out of place. It doesn't, you know, it just doesn't feel like it is the best pocket clip for this knife. It's reasonable, but it's not the best. Uh, let's show it in a pair of pants right now while we're on that subject. So it goes in the pocket quite well. The pocket clip is very functional. It works just, just great. But there you go. You've got three millimeters, three centimeters, I should say. A little over three centimeters, a little over an inch and a quarter of the knife sticking out. No, sorry, just under an inch and a quarter <laughs> sticking out. Over an inch, but less than an inch and a quarter. So I wish that, uh, yeah, that pocket clip was moved up that way or, you know, changed out for something else. But it's not bad. I, I It's not a bad pocket clip. I like that they have bent over the tip here so that you don't have a hot spot in your hand when you're using this. The uh, pocket clip does not annoy the hand at all, either in a right or left hand holding. It's just very, very comfortable. And that little bit of jimping that we used on the flipper tab becomes just a little bit of jimping on your finger guard right there. And that's a good thing. Okay, some other things. Well, I like this main bevel. The grind is just beautiful. I already mentioned that. The looks of this knife is very good. Uh, nice sharpness choil, perfect sharpness choil. I, I, I do like a sharpness choil on knives. Um, and the reason being is it's much easier to sharpen the knife to the end of the blade here without, you know, scratching up your ricasso and messing up the plunge and stuff and just making a mess of this area. Especially if you're a newbie to sharpening, you know, you, you like to have a nice sharpness tool. Uh, good balance, nice skeletonizing, low profile screws that I mentioned, great stuff. Cons for this knife, well, I've mentioned the pocket clip already. I want the deeper pocket clip. Detent I measured, mentioned I'd like a stronger detent. That's just a small thing. That's that's nitpicking, but it is something that's actual real. So you know, there is that issue. Um I thought that there might be an issue when I found out that there was a free spin pivot in there, but it's it's nice. It works just fine. Uh, that O-ring that they put in here, really good idea. I've mentioned some other knives, and I've shown you how there's this uh, sort of clear white silicone washer that uh, is just behind the screw sometimes on the pivot. Well, this has the same idea to help keep the screw tight without you know, holding it. It just stops it from being able to back out from you know the the friction and the inertia of going thwack you know sometimes if you didn't have those kinds of uh if you didn't have those kinds of fixes in here you, you could have your pivot pin your screw come loose and that holds it quite well so that you don't have to use some kind of thread locker or anything um, they could have skeletonized it more to make it lighter but it's not heavy by any means like 4.85 ounces if they would have skeletonized it more then it would have gotten lighter and then your pivot point would be having to move further this way. And right now I've already, not pivot point, the balance point. And I already told you where the balance point is. That's beautiful. So they couldn't skeletonize it more and, you know, have the same balance. So this is a beautiful, beautiful knife. The D2 has got a Rockwell hardness of around 60 and um, it's really nice. I want to see some more knives from Tucson. I want to review some more. And I want to find out more about this night morning design. If you've got any information on night morning design, especially if you've got some links to give to me that I can, uh, you know, find out more about uh, white morning uh, night morning design, um, I'm interested. So here's this knife by Tucson. You can get it using my links down below. I don't get a commission when you uh, buy from that gentleman on AliExpress. So if you do buy from him, please do let him know in the notes or email him back after you've made the purchase, telling him that Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge sent you. That way he realizes that it is a good thing that he's been selling these knives to me at a discount to review them. 
Um, if he doesn't hear from you, he doesn't know if it's worth it or not to help me out. So thank you for doing that. So remember, guys, we always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.